So the square roots of any complex number, we use the general method here, right? And the general method within itself really has three steps, right? The three steps were we let z equal to some complex number. They use w here, but that's fine. And we recognize that z squared then is going to be, after we expand it, we're going to get this step over here. Remember, why do we rearrange it in that way? Because it lets us equate real and imaginary parts very easily. OK, so that's step two. Equate real and imaginary parts. And then what was the last step? What do we do to finish it off? To actually find the answers to the square root. Yeah. Solve it. In a particular way, we have to solve simultaneously. Yeah. So those are your three steps. <coughs> this third step here is going to vary depending on the question you get, right? Because I did make this claim in the beginning when I start doing this in that we're not actually testing whether you can solve simultaneously. That's just a skill that we use. But there are various kind of tricks and things that are going to make this uh, quicker depending on the question that we get. But let's do an example first. Yeah, let's do the one that's there. Find the square roots of 3 plus 4i. So, um, yeah, how do we kick this guy off? What are we going to do first? Let z yep. Yeah, let z equal to x plus i, y. Um, and then we also kind of make the slinger where, I mean, you can either say z is complex, and I think in that assumption x and y are real, you can say x and y are real. Um, but let's just go with that. All right, so x and y are real. Remember that guy, that symbol that means is like, it's an element of, but it's just basically saying these are real numbers. Sorry, this one here? Oh yeah, it's kind of like an E. It's it, when you type it, it's more like that. Yeah, and you might have seen it before in one of the notes. It is. They are real numbers. Yeah, mathematically, I think it means that it's an element of. Yeah. Um, so if we do that. We say let z equals to x plus y i, and then so we say then that if we're looking for the square roots, going back to James's definition, we're saying that three plus four i is equal to x plus y i all squared. And at this point, you can probably just memorize the expansion there. You don't have to go through that whole process, right? So we can say that 3 plus 4i equals to x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi. Just keeping in mind that if you are going to memorize the expansion, you, you do memorize it correctly. If you are in doubt, yeah, go, just go ahead and do the expansion if you're not 100%. Um, better to take it a bit more slowly than to make a mistake here that's going to cost you, right? What I do ask is that if you are going to be doing a step that you clearly explain, explain what we're going to do, right? So what was that next step? It was to equate real and imaginary parts. And if you want to, do a bit of highlighting. Do like colors. <coughs> and so what do I want to get? If equating real and imaginary parts. We're going to get x squared minus y squared equals to 3. And then, like I said, imaginary parts, we're looking at the <coughs> numbers of values in front, so we've got 4 is equal to 2xy. All right, next step, Angus, what are you thinking? Solve simultaneously. Yeah, solve simultaneously. Uh, what would be the easiest way to do this? Substitution. Substitution, right? So we go ahead and try and make one of the subject. I've got like squares here, don't really want to work with that. So let's try and rearrange this one as a subject. Let's say y, potentially, right? So we divide both sides by 2x, and that gives us just 2 on x, really, right? So y equals 2 on x, yeah? And we go ahead and substitute that into here. So I've got 1, and I've got 2. So I'm going to sub 2 into 1. And so I'm going to get x squared minus 
2 on x all squared when I substitute it in and 3 or I can write that as 4 on x squared when I expand it out here. Why does it look fun, Matt? It's on the denominator. Anyway, if I've got something like this, you got any suggestions for me? No, but that's the best time to think about it. Yeah. What do you like? No, you could give up and look at the answers, but unfortunately, I've got the answers here, and you can't look at the answers. What, what, like, like, what, what does this kind of situation or equation lend you to do if you want to try and solve it? Like, what's the problem right now that we can't solve it straight up? I'm looking, I'm looking at this one in particular here, yeah, like this one over here, there's something that's really, like, any time I see it, I try and want to get rid of it. Like, you don't like fractions? I don't like fractions, yeah. Do we have to get rid of it? I mean, let's say we want to get rid of it, how would we get rid of it? You can technically get rid of it by making the power of 2 minus. Which one? What are you talking about? Like the, the one on the bottom. This one here? Yeah. Make that like the power of minus. Okay, yeah, right. But I can write it as a negative index, yeah. You can do that. I can do that. Forget it was x squared. What if it was just a value? What if it was just like 4 or something, right? Oh, so multiply you multiply both sides by what's on the denominator, yeah. Okay, so we get x to the power of 4. How is that useful? Um, now, this is actually what we call a quartic equation, because it's power 4, right? x to the power 4, I'm going to rearrange it so it's a bit more familiar for you all. Now, pretend that it was an x to the power 4. How would you solve that? Yeah, you can actually apply PSF, interestingly, to something like this, right? Right, so we need something that multiplies to negative 4 and adds to negative 3. So that's going to be negative 4 and positive 1. Right. Right, so usually you have, you know, like x squared. Uh, I want to write it over here. Usually you have like u squared minus 3u minus 4. And really what you're doing is you're taking the square root of this guy, so you get u minus 4, u plus 1, right? But if you, all you need to do is just see something that satisfies this, because when you do your expansions, these two are going to be multiplied together. You want to get x to the power of 4. Once that, you can just write x squared. That's all you need to do. Yeah. And that satisfies it out. And thinking back to when we do this, we're getting two solutions here. Right? We're getting this is equal to 0. In reality, we're getting four solutions because we've got a quartic equation. So if you've got x squared is equal to positive 4, or x squared is equal to negative 1. We actually reject one of these. Which one do we reject? One, one. Right, we don't, reject, we don't like this one because x and y have to be real, so we don't have to bother with that one. So we get two solutions. So x is equal to plus or minus 2, and that makes it easy over here. We can find out what y is equal to. The thing I will caution is that when you write your solution like this, because we're dealing with complex numbers, which has in a real and imaginary part, um, you do have to be careful which one you match it up with, okay? Because that will actually change. Um, I mean, any time you're solving simultaneously, right, you have to be careful which one you're matching it up with. But particularly when we're looking at complex numbers here, right? So your two solutions are um, when x is equal to 2, positive 2, y would equal to positive 1. And when x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to, putting it back into here, negative 1. But going back to the original question, we're looking for the square roots. So what are the square roots? Because we found the x and y values, but that's not finding the square roots, is it? All right. What were x and y? x and y are the... The real and imaginary parts over here, right? So what are our square roots actually going to be when we put these values in? You just put it back in. And there's other square roots, right? What are they? Two minus i. Yep. Uh, so let's see. Two, or two plus i. Two plus i. Plus plus i or 
minus 2 minus i. You'll often see them written as one expression, so something like this. If you are going to... Yeah, yeah. So you, if you are going to do this, you have to be careful because it won't always be like completely positive and completely negative. Yeah. So sometimes they'll have this mixed around, or the plus or minus is different. Um, you just have to be careful about that. But when in doubt, you just write it like that. That's perfectly fine. Just be aware that they do often write it like this. All right. Get that down for me. And while you're getting that down, I'll talk about how to make this easier. Right. Because you saw the problem when we were trying to do this. The problem was that we create a quartic equation, and quartic equations have lots of solutions. It's possible to do, you saw it there, right? But where can we kind of shave time off this, or where can we make this a bit quicker? It's often the case that you can actually solve some of these straight from this step, avoiding the quartic solution, quartic equation entirely. Looking at these ones, can anyone kind of see, could anyone see the solution before we started, or was it not that, was it, um, yeah, what do you reckon? Could you, like, do you, can you imagine that this would have worked? Oh, yeah. Did you, what did you do? Like, was it two squares four? Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of saw that beforehand. Well, no, I, now that you look at it, yeah. yeah. It, what makes it easy to identify that? Like, where did you just think of four squared? Like, two squared is four. Mhm. Mm mhm. The key thing to look at. You're right. Four minus one is three. <laughs> but the key part to look at is this one, right? In fact, let me write it a bit differently so it's even more clear. If I divide both sides by 2 here, what am I looking for? I'm just looking for factors of 2. Right? And that restricts my solutions very, by a lot. Yeah, which is uh, a bit tricky. Um, the thing you do want to be aware of is the negatives and things like that. But you can see values that are going to satisfy this and this one without too much mental effort. Right? You can just say, OK, two things that multiply give me positive 2, well, I could take you know, 2 and 1. You're just not really too sure which one's going to be which, but you can see from over here, well, if x squared minus y squared has to equal to 3, well, x is going to have to equal to 2, y is going to have to equal to 1, and then what's the other one that would work for this? Well, negative 2 and negative 1 as well. Okay. So that's my tip for this one. Right. Look at equation 2 to find factors. Of, I guess, it's not always what it equals. Why wouldn't it always work? Because they're going to make hard questions because that's what they do. What would it make doing this harder? <coughs> like, I'm, I'm asked you specifically, why is this so easy to do? It's so easy to do because. That's right, that's right. Big, big exactly. Go back to here, right? This is always going to be 2xy. Yeah, this is always going to be 2xy over here because of the expansion. But this side is not always going to be an... It's not always going to be an even number, right? Because if you make this odd, then when you divide both sides by 2, it gets trickier. Yeah, right. You're going to, you, there's a like, whole range of other solutions. It's not always easy to identify. But any time your y value here is even... So this generally works when the y value is even for whatever you're trying to find the square root of. So anytime you have that situation, and if you flick through any textbook, um, they often do that because they like having integer solutions for uh, these x and y components. So like I said, they won't always be. Right? But this is one of the tips to make it a bit faster. Anytime you have an even value as the imaginary part, you can use this little trick to try and make it a bit quicker. Yeah?